The purpose uh, for this uh, video homework guide is to review some of the angle properties for our geometry chapter. And for this video, my plan is to go over some of the basic triangle properties. Uh, so for question number one, I need to find the measure of each numbered angle. So for problem number one, if I want to find angle number one, uh, the general rule is that all triangles add up to 180 degrees. So you have 35 and 47. So in order to find the, uh, the third angle there, you would take 180 degrees and you would uh, subtract 35. And then you would also subtract 47. And that will give you uh, 98 degrees. So for angle number one, that would be 98 degrees. And that would ensure that all angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. For uh, question number two, uh, this box right here, uh, that represents a right angle, so that's gonna be 90 degrees. And just like the previous problem, we know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so I can subtract the 90 degrees and subtract the 41 degrees, and if I do that, I should get 49 degrees for angle number two. So angle number two is going to be 49 degrees there. Okay, um, just double check that, yeah, 49 degrees. Okay, and for question number three, uh, whenever the triangle has these kind of markings here, uh, that generally means that this side here in green is equal to this side over here in green. So this is an isosceles triangle. And for an isosceles triangle, the corner angles are gonna be equal. So if that's 67, then angle three has to be 67 degrees as well. And then in order to find angle number four, uh, we know that once again, using the same kind of concept, we would we know that all angles in a triangle add up to uh, 180 degrees. So I can uh, take 180 degrees, subtract 67, uh, subtract 67. And with that, I should get uh, 46 degrees for angle number uh, four there. Okay, uh, let's move on to question number four now. Uh, so for question number four, uh, once again, I have these markings here. So uh, this side and that side are equal. So that means uh, we're dealing with an isosceles triangle here. So uh, we know that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we would take 180 degrees and then we would minus this 100 degrees, which will give us now 80 degrees. Now that 80 degrees, it has to be shared equally with angles five and six. So we can divide that by two and then we would get 40. So this would be 40 degrees and then that would be 40 degrees. So the two angles are 40 degrees and 40 degrees. All right, so uh, that question and the previous problem, uh, those were properties of the isosceles triangle. And for question number five, uh, we notice that all three of the sides are equal. So this is an equilateral triangle, and that just means all the angles are gonna be uh, 60 degrees. So this is 60, that's 60, and that's 60. So angle number seven is gonna be 60 degrees. Okay, uh, moving on to question number six. Um, in order to find angle number eight here, we have to recognize that this bigger angle right here, we call that angles on a line. So the 150 degrees and the angle eight, that must add up to 180 degrees because angles on a line, um, those angles add up to 180 degrees. So uh, angle eight has to be 30 degrees and that will ensure you that this whole angle adds up to 180 degrees. So angle eight is gonna be 30 degrees then uh, you can definitely find uh, angle uh, number nine now by simply doing the uh, angles in a triangle property. So that's 180 minus 30 minus 55. And uh, if I do that correctly, uh, let's do this really quickly on the calculator here. So minus 30 minus 55, that's gonna be uh, 95 degrees. So angle number nine is gonna be 95 degrees. Whoops, Whoops uh, this angle is 95 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, so for uh, question number seven here, the relationship between angle one and 110 degrees, uh, that's called vertically opposite angles. So those two angles will be equal. So angle one is gonna be 110 degrees because angles that are opposite of each other, we call that vertically opposite, they're gonna be equal. So angle number one is gonna be 110 degrees. And then angle number two, uh, you can definitely use the angles in a triangle property. So 180 minus 110 minus 46, and that's gonna give you uh, 24 degrees. So angle number two is gonna be 24 degrees. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number eight here. 
so for question number eight, uh, notice that this side and that side are equal because of the markings there. So you do have an isosceles triangle. That's something that you might um, have to remember. And we can find angle three right away by using the angles on the property concept. So in order to find angle number three, it's gonna be 180 degrees minus 74. So 180 degrees minus 74 is gonna be 106. So that's gonna be 106 degrees. And then in order to find angle number four, it's an isosceles triangle. So we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So I can take my 180 and subtract my 106. And if I take 180 and subtract 106, I get 74 degrees. And then you need to divide that by two. And that will give you uh, 37 degrees. So the two corner angles are gonna be 37 degrees. So angle number four is gonna be 37 degrees. Okay, um, I'm gonna move back, move uh, back to the top of the page now, and uh, we'll start again on question number nine here. So we have a few more uh, triangle questions to, to work with. Um, for the next question, we can find angle five right away because it is um, there's a triangle right there, a bigger triangle. So we can find angle number five by doing 180 degrees. Subtract uh, the two angles that are given to us, which are 27 and 50. So if I go ahead and subtract those two angles, I will get uh, 103 degrees. So angle number five is gonna be 103 degrees because angles in a triangle uh, add to 180 degrees. And then from there, you can find angle number six right away because we have the concept of angles on a line. So for angle number six, I would do 180 degrees minus 103 degrees. So 180 minus 103 degrees would be 77 degrees. So angle number six is gonna be 77 degrees. Okay, and uh, after that, let's go ahead and just mark that in, 77 degrees. And uh, finally, you should recognize that over here, we have another isosceles triangle there in the corner. And uh, in order to find uh, the corner angles there, we can take 180 degrees minus 77 degrees. And if I do that calculation there, let's do that, let's do that really quickly there, that'll give me 103 degrees. And then we take 103 and we just divide that by two because those two angles are gonna be equal. And uh, I get 51, I get 51.5 degrees there. So this is gonna be 51.5 degrees. And that completes, uh, so that's gonna be 51.5 and that's gonna be 51.5. Right, so that concludes that question there. Let's keep on going here with question number 10. Uh, question number 10, uh, this triangle right here in green, that's an equilateral triangle. So that's gonna be 60, 60, and 60. So angle number one is gonna be 60 degrees. And I know that angle three here, um, actually no, uh, we know that angle two is gonna be angles on a line. So 180 minus 60 is going to be 120. So angle number two is gonna be 120 degrees. And then we can find our third angle, this uh, blue angle down here, by simply going 180 minus 120 degrees minus 25 degrees. So uh, that's, that should be about 35 degrees right there. So angle number three is gonna be 35 degrees. Okay, let's keep on moving along here. Uh, for question number 11, uh, I do have an isosceles triangle over here. So I know this corner angle has to be 76 degrees. And then I can find angle four by simply going 180 minus 76 minus 76. So 180 minus 76 minus 76 is gonna be 28 degrees. So angle number four is gonna be 28 degrees. So let's put my 28 degrees here. And then you should recognize that angle four and, and angle five, they're vertically opposite angles. So these two angles have to be equal. So angle five is also gonna be 28 degrees. 28 degrees. Oops, 28 degrees. And uh, angle number six, I guess you can uh, use the angles in a triangle property. So 180 minus 28 minus 100. Uh, that's gonna be what, 80 minus 28, which is gonna be what, 52 degrees. So uh, angle number six is gonna be 52 degrees. All right, so uh, we are dealing with quite a bit of triangles in this, in this worksheet. So uh, 
we will be using the concept of triangles adding up to 180 degrees quite often here. Uh, for question number 12, uh, you have a 90 degree angle there, so that's 90 degrees. That's a right angle. And let's mark that in. And then uh, these two uh, sides are equal, so that means you have, a, um, you have an isosceles triangle, so the two corner angles have to be equal. And they're both going to be 45 and 45, and that will ensure you that the triangle adds up to 180 degrees. Okay, question number 13 here. Uh, once again, I have a right angle up here, so that's going to be 90 degrees. And I do have an isosceles triangle right here because of those markings. So this will be 45, and that's going to be 45. So question number, so angle number one is going to be 45 degrees because of the uh, isosceles triangle property. And we know that these two angles in green, they're vertically opposite, so that means they're equal to each other. So angle number two is also going to be 45 degrees. Sorry, the pen's just not working well right now, so uh, that's going to be 45 degrees. Okay, so let's just put the uh, 45 degrees right there. And then finally, uh, if I take a look at this triangle right here, that adds up to 180 degrees. So for angle number three, I would do 180 minus 95 uh, minus uh, 45. Okay, so uh, 180 minus 95 minus 45, that's going to be 40 degrees there. Okay, so uh, let's go on to uh, question number 14 here. Uh, question number 14, I do have a isosceles triangle here. So uh, this is more like kind of, kind of like the problems that we will be seeing uh, in our circle geometry chapter. So uh, for my triangle, we know we have 180 degrees for the total. So let's go ahead and subtract 114 degrees. So 180 minus 114 is going to be uh, 66. And then we divide that by 2. And if I divide that by 2, I should get 33 degrees for uh, my two corner angles there. So angle number four is going to be 33 degrees. Okay, let's go on to uh, number 15. And for number 15, um, one thing that you're going to do with this particular question is you're going to have to create your isosceles triangle because this right here, this red line, that's a radius. So, and this blue line here, that's a radius. And we know those two radii, they're equal. So I can just uh, mark in my triangle and create my, iso my isosceles triangle. So this is going to be 53 degrees right here. So angle number five is going to be 53 degrees. And then for angle number six, you can do the 180 minus the 53 minus the 53. And that should give you about 74 degrees there. Yeah, 74 degrees. Okay, so that's it for the first uh, 15 questions. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next set. So uh, question number uh, 16 here. So I need to find angles uh, seven and eight. And for this particular problem, recognize that I do have a radius right here. That's a radius. Then over here, I have a radius. And finally, over here, I also have a radius as well. So uh, mark in uh, all three of the radiuses or the radii in there. And uh, let's go ahead and just uh, solve the problem now. For angle number seven, um, I know this is gonna be angles on a line, right? So for angles on a line, we know it's going to be 180 minus 65 because angles on a line, they do add up to um, 180 degrees. So angle number seven is going to be 115 degrees. Sorry, this is not written well. So 115 degrees. And in order to find the two corner angles, we have an isosceles triangle. So now I can do 180 minus 115 degrees. And uh, that's going to be a 65, and then I can take 65 and divide it by 2, and that should give me 32 and a half. So uh, 32 and a half degrees for my corner angles. All right, great. Um, let's go ahead and keep on moving along here. Most of these questions aren't too bad once you see the general, uh, the main concept being used. And... For question number seven, uh, you can find angle number one right away because if I take this 110 degrees, this 120 degrees, and this angle number one, uh, all three of those angles, because we're going around a circle um, and we're at the center there, I mean, that has to add up to 360 degrees because uh, this is the entire angle there, right? So in order to find angle number one, now we're taking uh, 360 degrees and we're minusing the 110 and we're also minus 120. 
All right, so 360 minus 110 minus 120 is going to give me 130 degrees. So an angle number one is going to be 130 degrees. And after that, notice that we do have a, radii, a radius here and a radius over here. Those, um, the radius is always equal in a circle there, so I have an isosceles triangle there. So um, if I take 180 degrees minus 130, that's going to be 50. And then if I divide 50 by 2, that's going to give me 25 degrees. So my corner angles are going to be 25 and 25. All right, so that's how you would complete uh, that particular question there. Okay. Let's move on to question number eight, another circle geometry question here. So one thing I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna go ahead and mark in the, the radius here. So I have two isosceles triangles there. Uh, I know angle number three right away because um, this right here, sorry, this triangle right here in green, that is an isosceles triangle. So the corner angles have to be equal. So angle number three has to be 20 degrees. Uh, once you know angle number three, uh, you should be able to find angle number four because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, right? So um, 180 minus 20 minus 20 is going to give you 140. So that's going to be 140 right there. And then for angle number five, uh, we can find that angle right away because uh, it's angles on a line. So we know angles on a line add up to 180 degrees. So angle five has to be 40 degrees. So 140 plus 40 is gonna be 180 degrees. And then finally, um, you'll notice that in this last triangle here, we have another isosceles triangle there. So the two angles, they should be equal. So uh, I know this is gonna be 70 and that should be 70 there. And uh, those two angles are equal, and that ensures you that that yellow triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So this will be uh, 70 degrees here to finish off that one. Okay, let's move on to number 19 here. All right, so we have some new properties here. Um, these two lines right here, once you have these kind of markers here, uh, it indicates that the two lines there are parallel. And once you have uh, parallel lines, uh, we do have a few uh, other rules that we need to consider. And um, one of the rules that I kind of uh, teach students or talk about in class, this is a very uh, common concept in geometry is, uh, I call it the F-shape rule. So um, if these two yellow lines are parallel, then these two angles, sorry, the red angles here have to be equal. So um, I can call this the F-shape rule, but the real uh, term is called corresponding angles. And if I take my green marker here, you'll notice that there is a sideways F right there, right? So uh, this angle here and this angle here are equal, and that's by corresponding angles. And corresponding angles happens when you have two parallel lines. So angle number one is going to be 117 degrees. Okay, so, uh, so this angle right here is going to be 117 degrees. And once you have angle number one, um, you can definitely find angle number two because now angle one and angle two, that adds up to 180 degrees. So you can do 180 minus 117. So 180 minus 117 degrees, that's going to be uh, 63 degrees. So angle number two is going to be 63 degrees. And we know that this right angle here is going to be 90 degrees. And then for angle number three, we can simply do 180 minus 90 minus 63. And that's going to give you uh, 27 degrees as a final answer for, uh, for angle number three there. Okay, let's move on to question number 20 here. Uh, for question number 20, um, once again, uh, we do have these markings here indicating that these two lines here are parallel. And just on the side here, um, I call this the Z-shape rule, but the proper term is called alternate interior angles. And if your top lines are parallel and if you have this Z-shape forming, then these two inside angles are going to be equal, and that's called alternate interior angles. So back to my diagram here, you'll notice that these two purple angles, um, those two purple angles have to be equal because the yellow lines are parallel. We get the Z shape forming. So the Z shape is this thing right here. And uh, the two inside angles have to be equal because of alternate interior angles. So angle number four is gonna be 34 degrees by alternate interior angles. 
Okay, um, and then angle number five is gonna be easy because if this is 90 degrees on the right hand side, then angle five also has to be 90 degrees. So angle number five is gonna be 90 degrees. And then for angle number six, uh, you can simply do 180 minus 90 minus 34, and that will give you uh, 56 degrees. So angle number six is gonna be 56 degrees. Okay, let's move on to number 21 here. And for number 21, uh, I have another marking here and here, and that, indica and that indicates that these two yellow lines are parallel. So um, remember um, the F-shape rule. It's called corresponding angles, but these two inside angles have to be equal. And if I take up my purple marker here, uh, here's my F. So that means angle number seven and angle 105, those two angles have to be equal because of corresponding angles. So angle number seven is gonna be 105 degrees. And now you can find angle number eight because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So 180 minus 105 minus uh, 27 degrees gives you uh, 48 degrees. So angle number eight is gonna be uh, 48 degrees there. Right, so these are all good review questions um, just to kind of summarize the uh, angle properties. And uh, let's keep on going with uh, question number 22 now. Uh, for question number 22, um, I need to find angle number one. You might recognize that these two symbols right here uh, indicates that these two sides are parallel. And uh, remember the uh, Z shape rule, the alternate interior angles. So the two inside angles are equal. So if I continue to highlight this there's a sideways Z there and actually no that's not the Z shape that I want sorry the Z shape I want is gonna be like this there's a sideways Z shape right there so uh, this blue angle and that 40 degrees those two angles are gonna be equal because of alternate interior angles so uh, this is gonna be uh, angle number one is gonna be 40 degrees Okay, and then uh, once angle, angle number one is 40 degrees, uh, let me just erase this. Uh, you can find this orange angle next. And uh, that angle is gonna be 180 minus 40 minus 88. And that's gonna give you uh, 52 degrees. So this angle right here is 52 degrees. Sorry, this inside angle is gonna be 52 degrees. And that means angle number three, because they're vertically opposite, angle number three is gonna be uh, 52 degrees. And then you can find angle number two by simply doing 180 minus 40 minus 52, and that's gonna be 88 degrees. So angle number two is gonna be 88 degrees. And that's it for question number 22. All right, so uh, question number uh, 23. Uh, 23 is not too bad because angle number four I can find right away. Uh, Sorry, the pen's not working. Uh, so this is gonna be, angle number four is gonna be 180 minus 109 minus 53 degrees. And I believe that's gonna be uh, 18 degrees. So angle number four is gonna be 18 degrees. And because uh, these two lines are parallel, we do have the Z shape forming. So uh, these two angles have to be equal. So angle number five is also gonna be 18 degrees. Okay, let's keep on moving along here. Question number 24 here. Okay, so for question number 24, uh, this symbol here and this symbol there uh, indicates that these two purple lines are parallel and I can now draw a sideways F shape. So that means that these two orange angles have to be equal. So uh, angle number six is going to be 71 degrees by corresponding angles. And if angle number uh, six is gonna be uh, 71 degrees, that means this corner angle has to be 71 degrees because right here we have an isosceles triangle. So the two corner angles have to be equal. And then angle number seven, you can do 180 minus 71 minus 71, which is gonna be 38 degrees. So 38 degrees for angle number seven there. Okay, let's keep on moving along here with uh, question number uh, 25 here. Uh, okay, so for question number 25, um, uh, this is gonna be an interesting one here. Um, how can we get this question started here? Well, one, uh, one thing I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna highlight this angle, sorry, that side and that side. Those two sides are parallel. And notice that we have this uh, C shape there. So let me just kind of draw the rule out here. So, um, 
basically the rule is if these two lines are parallel and if you have a C-shape forming, then the two inside angles, uh, those two angles have to add up to, uh, to 90 degrees there. And that's called uh, interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Oh, sorry, sorry. They don't add up to 90 degrees. Uh, it adds up to 180 degrees. And uh, the general rule of that is called the uh, interior angles on the same side of the transversal. But I just call it the C-shape rule. And if you think about like, like a general square, um, we know the corner angles are 90 and 90. So we know these two angles add up to 180 degrees. And we know that the uh, top sides are parallel. So that's another way to kind of think about it. So I call it the C-shape the C rule for short, but the formal term is interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Uh, anyways, um, I can take um, this angle 105 and this uh, angle 8, and those two angles add to 180. So 180 minus 105 degrees is going to be 75 here. So that's going to be 75 for angle number 8. And in order to finish this question off here, let me just erase this. Uh, let's take a look at this bigger triangle here. Uh, we know this is 35, this is 75, and then I can find angle number 9 by simply doing 180 minus 75 minus 35 degrees. And uh, if I do that, I believe that's going to be uh, 70 degrees there. And uh, let me just double check the, the numbers there. Yeah, 70 degrees. Okay, let's keep on going here. A bunch of questions for us to go over here. Um, angle number one, well, uh, let's go ahead and find this angle first. So uh, this blue angle is going to be 180 minus 66 minus 41. So 180 minus 66 minus 41, that's going to be uh, 73 degrees. So that's going to be 73 degrees. And then we know angles on a line add to 180, so 180 minus 73. Um, that will give me the last angle there for angle number one, and that's going to be 107 degrees there. Uh, question number two, uh, we know this is, uh, sorry, question number 27, we need to find angle number two. We know this is 90 degrees. And uh, this red angle here, uh, we know that angles on a line add to 180. So 180 minus 152. And if we do that, that's going to be uh, 28 degrees. So that's going to be 28 degrees. And then we have a triangle right here, and that, adds, that, that will add up to 180. So angle number two is going to be 180 minus 90 minus 28 and that's going to give you uh, 62 degrees. So angle number two is 62 degrees. Okay, 28. Okay, so for 28, uh, I have the markings here. So I have an isosceles triangle. So I can take 180 degrees minus the 58. So 180 minus the 58 is going to be 122. And then we can divide that by 2. And that gives me uh, 61 degrees, so 61 there and 61 there. And then angles on a line, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that will add to 180 degrees. So 181 minus uh, 61 is going to be, um, I think, 119. Yeah, 119 degrees. Okay, great. So that's uh, the first 28 questions. Uh, let's keep on going with number 29 now. Uh, for 29, um, notice that I have an isosceles triangle right here. All right, so this angle has to be 70 degrees. And uh, for this angle right here, uh, that should be 40 degrees. That will ensure you that both, uh, th sorry, that will ensure you that the triangle adds up to 180. If that's 40 degrees, and this angle here has to be 40 degrees. And then uh, this angle here has to be 40 degrees because we have another isosceles triangle. And then angle number four is going to be. Um, so that should be what, 180 minus 40 minus 40. So is that just 100 degrees there? And so angle number four is gonna be uh, 100, 100 degrees there. Okay, so we wanna call question number 30. A lot of the questions are kind of repeating in terms of the same concept here. Uh, over here, I have an isosceles triangle there, so all the angles will add up to uh, 180, but they're all equal angles, so that's going to be 60 degrees. And then angles on a line, so those two angles add up to 180, so this will be 120. And uh, we have an isosceles triangle here, so uh, that means these two corner angles are the same, and they should be both be equal to 30 degrees, so 30 degrees on angle number 5 there. Okay, and uh, question number 31, um, 
Over here, this is 90 degrees. I have my Saucy's triangle there. So uh, these two angles should be the same, so 45 and 45. And um, now I can do angles on a the line there. So um, this will be 180 minus 45. And that's gonna be 135. So let me just erase that. And uh, this will be 135 degrees. And then once again, I have another isosceles triangle here. So these two angles have to be the same. So 180 minus 135 is gonna be 45 and then divide that by two. That's gonna be a 22 and a half. So 22 and a half would be my two corner angles. So 22 and a half and 22 and a half. Okay, let's go on to question number 32 now. Um, for, 30, for 32, uh, I guess all these sides are equal. So I have an equilateral triangle on the right-hand side. So 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. I have opposite angles here. So 60 degrees, this will be 90 degrees. And question, uh, sorry, angle number seven should be uh, 30 degrees to complete the 180 degrees there. Okay, let's move on to uh, 33 now. For 33, um, I have a, a radius here, I have a radius there, and I have another radius there. So I have some isosceles triangles there. So uh, this angle here should be 25. And uh, then this angle here has to be 130 degrees to complete the angles in a triangle concept. And then if I use angles on a line right here, this will be 50 degrees. And then if I do 180, uh, minus 50 degrees, that's gonna be 30 degree, 130 degrees, and let's go ahead and divide that by two now, and that should be uh, 65 degrees. So angle number eight is gonna be 65 degrees because of the isosceles triangle property there. All right, I do apologize, I'm starting to run out of energy here uh, because most of the uh, concepts are just repeating and um, it's taking a lot out of me here. Let's move on to question number uh, 34. Um, this is 130 degrees, so that means that this angle right here has to be 130 degrees as well because that's, you know, vertically uh, opposite angles here have to be equal, right? So uh, this is going to be 130 degrees. And then angles on a line, uh, those, will, those angles will add to um, 180 degrees, so this is 50 degrees. And um, if that's 50 degrees, uh, Okay, let's go ahead and find uh, this angle right here, which is going to be 38 degrees. And the reason there is, the reason there is because these two lines are parallel, and uh, we have my Z shape here. So uh, these two angles have to be equal. That's the alternate interior angles property. And then finally, I have a triangle right there. So angle number nine is going to be 180 minus 38 minus 50 degrees. That's going to be uh, 92 degrees there for angle number 34. So angle number 34 is 92 degrees. Okay, let's go on to question number uh, 35 now. And um, um, we're almost done this uh, video homework guide here. Okay, let's see what we can do with uh, question number uh, 35 here. Uh, I'm going to find angle number one there. Okay, so I think for this question, let's go ahead and use the angles on a line property there. So we know angles on a line. Uh, that will add up to 180 degrees. So this angle here should be 60. And then let's go ahead and use the angles in a triangle property because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And that's gonna be a 70 degrees here. And finally, um, you'll notice that these two lines are parallel. So um, if I go ahead and use uh, the sideways F shape rule, there's my sideways F, and remember the F shape rule works like this. Uh, the two inside angles are equal. So this inside angle number one, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do this part in green or blue here. This angle and this angle are equal. So angle number one has to be uh, 70 degrees as well by the corresponding angles concept. All right, so those are most of the uh, basic angle property questions, and uh, I do have a few more uh, word problems up here. Um, for question number 36, uh, find the measures of the three angles of triangle ABC. Uh, we're given that angle A is twice angle B, and angle C is three times angle B. Now, these are essentially word problems, and the way you could set this up is we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to equal to 180 degrees. 
Okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, line right here. I, I know angle A is twice angle B. So angle A is gonna be double angle B. Okay, so the way I'm gonna use that idea now is I'm gonna take this idea here and I will move it over here. So this A now, instead of writing A, I'm gonna replace that with 2B because angle A is twice angle B. So I'm gonna erase that now and replace that with just 2B. Okay. And then let's take a look at this uh, line right here. C is three times B. So angle C is gonna be three times B. So instead of writing C over here, I can write C as, C as 3B now. So let me erase that and I'll write this as 3B. And now over here on the, on the, on the right-hand side here, I just have a general equation now, right? So two bananas plus one banana is three bananas and three bananas plus three bananas is gonna be six bananas. So six bananas equals to 180. And then I can divide both sides by six. So 180 divided by six is gonna be uh, 30 degrees. So angle B is gonna be 30 degrees. Okay, so uh, I know B is gonna be 30 degrees. I know angle A is twice angle B, so that means A is gonna be double B, so A is gonna be 60 degrees. And for angle C, I mean, um, I guess that has to be 90 degrees, right? Because uh, angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees there. So that's how you can do question number uh, 36A. Uh, write out your equation and then um, and then uh, just set up uh, some brand new equations, do some substitutions, and then solve for the uh, variables. Okay, let's look at let's take a look at letter B now. I know that angle A and angle B are equal, and angle C is 36 degrees more than angle number A. Okay, so let's just start this off by saying angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals to 180 degrees. Okay. And let's work with uh, this part right here. I know angle C is 36 degrees more than angle A. Okay, so let's think about this. Uh, if I write C equals to A, that means angle C and angle A are actually equal to each other. But if C is 36 degrees more, what I need to do is I need to put the 36 on the right hand side. And the reason I do that is because if I read this from left to right, C is now equal to angle A plus 36 more degrees. So that ensures us that angle C is actually bigger by 36 degrees. Okay, so how do I use uh, this line right here to further help me in the problem? Well, here's my angle C over here in my equation. I'm gonna replace angle C now with this expression right here. So this is gonna be A plus B plus a plus 36 because I know angle C is equal to A plus 36 degrees. Okay, uh, let's move on. Let's move this over now. And now uh, let's take a look at this angle B here. Let me erase this. We know that angle B is equal to angle A. So using this idea here, I can just change angle B now to angle A because we know we know that, that the two angles are equal to each other. So here's my equation now. We know that this whole thing is gonna to add to 180 degrees and now we just need to add up the like variables or the like terms. So one apple plus one apple plus one apple is gonna be three apples plus 36 equals to 180 degrees. And then I can minus 36 from both sides. So three apples will equal to 180 minus 36, which is gonna be 144 and then divided by three. So A would equal to, so we're, we're dividing both sides by three now. So angle A would equal to 48 degrees. Okay, so let's go back and update our problem now. I know angle A is gonna be 48 degrees. I know angle B has to be 48 degrees. And angle number C, um, I'll just do 180 minus 48 minus 48, which is gonna be uh, 84 degrees. But 48 plus 36 is also gonna be 84 degrees there. And that's how you can do uh, question number B there. All right, last question for this video. This video is actually getting quite lengthy here, uh, but it's, it's a good review for those students who have forgotten their basic geometry properties. Okay, so for this particular problem, uh, before I even start, I'm just gonna do my, my initial setup here. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C is gonna be 180 degrees. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and figure this out. I know angle B is twice 
angle A, so that, that means B is going to be double angle A. Oops. Okay, and then over here I have angle C is 10 degrees less than angle B. Okay, so that means angle C is smaller than B, right? So if I write down C equals to B, this means the two angles are equal. But I know angle C is smaller because it's 10 degrees less than B, so I need a minus 10 on the B. Now if you read this from left to right, this means that angle C takes on the value of angle B, then minus 10 degrees, right? So if you read it from left to right, C is equal to the value of angle B minus 10. That ensures you that C is actually smaller. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's try to you know figure this you know this problem out here. Um, let's go. Let's start off with the the C variable here. I know C is equal to this, right? So I can change the C with uh, B minus 10 equals to 180 degrees. Then I have my plus B here, and then my plus A there. And uh, going back to uh, this equation here in the green box there, um, let's try our best to get rid of this angle A here. So if I go to this, um, this equation over here, I can actually divide both sides of this equation by two. So if I divide that by two, then I can divide this side by two. Those will cancel off, and that gives me A equals to B over two. And now I can, and instead of writing this A here, I can write this as b over 2, right? So this is b over 2 plus b plus b minus 10 equals to 180 degrees there. All right, so now I have the same variable here and let's just add this up together. So I have one banana plus one banana plus a half a banana. That's really two and a half bananas. And then from there, I can just add 10 to both sides. This is going to be 190 equals to two and a half bananas. Sorry, that's going to be 2.5b. And then I can divide both sides by 2.5. And then angle B would equal to uh, 76 degrees there. Okay, let's go back to uh, the problem now. Um, I know angle B, based on the algebra there, was 76 degrees. And angle B is twice angle A, so angle A is going to be half of that. So 76 divided by 2 is going to be 38 degrees. And then for angle C, let's just do 180 minus 76 minus 38, which is going to be uh, 66 degrees. And, and there you go. That completes the uh, angle review. Um, this video was quite lengthy, but uh, if you have forgotten all your angle rules, hopefully this is a good review. All right, we'll see you next time.